Good morning, everyone, and thank you and welcome for joining us today on Sunday morning. We want to say happy Father's Day, but we are so grateful to be here today and the presence of the Lord, and he is our good, good father, and we just want to welcome you today. We hope you open up your heart and your mind and let the Lord speak to you today. Before we start our service and go into our worship and our praises today, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Father, that we open up our heart and our mind, Lord, to look for a new word from you, Lord Jesus. Not relying on the victories of yesterday, Lord, but stretching forward, Lord, to a new word, Father, for a new victory that you have um, for us to accomplish this week, Lord. We're grateful and we're thankful, Lord. We know that your spirit is always with us, Lord Jesus. May you shine brighter, Lord God, um, with us, with the songs that we sing, Lord, through the worship and through the word um, over our pastor, Lord. May your spirit, Father God, be upon him in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We're so grateful to worship you and give you all the honor that you deserve, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. We all say amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we worship Him. You are good, Lord. Yes, Father. Open the eyes of my heart. Let's sing it out. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. Oh, see that again. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. See you high and lifted up to the See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I lift it up. I lift it up. It's shining in the light of the glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see, yes, I want to see, I want to see. Oh, see it again, church, open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see, yes, we do. I want to see. Come on, let's lift it up, let's see why. Shining in the light of the morning, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. You lift it up, you lift it up. Shining in the light of the morning, pour out your power and love as we sing holy. Holy, 
You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, 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 worthy. Jesus, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. I want to see. You. I want to see, you, Lord. I want to see. Yes, we do. I want to see. You want to see, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. Last time. I want to see you. I want to see you. Amen. Give him praise this morning. We want to see him. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord God. We would see you, that we would know your love, that we would know your glory, to honor you, to lift you high, because you are so good to us, Lord. We love you, Father God. Let's continue to worship him, church. He is a good Father, amen. And I've heard a thousand stories of wonder. I think you're like but I've heard the tender whispers of love. The dead of night and you tell that you're pleasing that I'll never alone. Searching for rest, only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father, to you are. Yeah, 
thank you, Lord, that we are reminded today on this Father's Day. We thank you for all the fathers in the world. We thank you, Father God, for the dads out there, Lord. We thank you for the leaders of the families, Lord Jesus. But most of all, we thank you, Father God, for being such a good father to our, our lives, Father God, in our lives, Father. We just praise you, Father, because in all of your ways, you are perfect, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Father, for such an example. We thank you that you gave your son to die on the cross for us, sacrificing him, knowing that you are an example of an amazing father. And we just praise you this day, Lord, as we celebrate our fathers here on this earth, but that we be reminded that there is one father above all, and that is you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for who you are, for you're worthy of all of our praises, Lord, for you are holy, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that you are in our presence, in our midst today, in our homes, Father God, in our families, Lord Jesus. We just thank you today for being such a good, good Father. We just want to honor you, give you praise and glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Happy Father's Day, Faith Vision men. Pray you have a blessed day with your families today. Pray your wives uh, bless you with your favorite meal. Uh, it's been a great uh, ride in our Kingdom Men book. I've enjoyed doing it on uh, Zoom. It's been a great challenge uh, uh, for me doing the cyber stuff, but it's been exciting to see your faces um, since we can't meet personal. I'm looking forward to meeting personal when we get back, uh, when the leadership team decides we're gonna gather. But until then, man, I encourage you to keep reading your book because I enjoy when we fellowship, when we talk. I want to leave you with the scripture out of Colossians. You know, man, as kingdom men, it tells us, I believe it's in chapter 3, it tells us whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly unto God and not man. And that's the whole thing. We do hold things wholeheartedly unto God and everything else will fall in place. So God bless. Have a blessed Father's Day with your family, man. And I'll see you soon. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. In this Father's Day, I have a word that I want to share with you fathers. And that word is to live a prosperous life. In Psalm 1 and verse 3, the last part of it, it says, In all that he does will be prosperous. And then we find out from the first verse of this psalm, he talk about a righteous person. A person that have a right relationship with God. In his mind and his in heart. Verse 2, it says, His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. And in our verse, last part of it, in, in all that he does will be prosper. I believe this is God's will for every human race, start from the beginning, that we must be prosper in all our days, spiritually, physically, and financially. And then the key to it, to live that prosperous life, is to be delight. Let the word of God be a, a delightful into our life. Things that we love to read, love to study, love to meditate day and night. It will help us because the Bible says Jesus Christ is the word of God. When Christ lives in our heart, it blesses us. And then last says in our last, verse in the 
last part of our verse 3. And then in all our days, whatever we do, it will be prosper. May God bless you fathers and everyone that listen. In all our days, the rest of your life, be prosperous. In Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name I pray that you bless every father and draw them, Holy Spirit, to your word. They may be live according to your word. And I want to thank you, Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, church. Happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to everyone worshiping with us today. God is good. Praise God for this wonderful morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verses 11 to 22 as we close off this chapter this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 22. Let's open in a word of prayer. And let's ask God to bless our time together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for bringing us here today as we remember and celebrate and honor our fathers, Lord, our dads. We thank you for the love that you've uh, given to them, that they would love us, Lord. We thank you for the strength and the health that you've given to them, Lord, to be a provider, Lord, to be the example of what it means and what it is to be a godly man. And Father, for those that may not have fathers, Lord, in their lives, I pray, Lord God, that they would continue to sense and, and know and feel your presence in their lives, as your word tells us, Lord, that you are ever present with us at all times. And so, Father God, I pray that as we seek you in your word this morning, we would draw closer to you, and that you would give us peace and comfort, Lord, that we need in our lives. And we thank you and we glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. If you're thankful this morning, can we give God a hand of praise for his blessings, his goodness, amen. Amen. The title of my message this morning is, Lord, Live Inside of Me. That is our prayer daily, or that should be our prayer as we wake up every single day, that we pray and we call out to God and say, Lord, live inside of me, that the things that I say and do would be of you, that I would be led of your Holy Spirit, that my actions would reflect you in my life. Amen. That is our prayer that for fathers today. That is our prayer. Lord, live inside of me. Let's open and read together verses 11 to 13. This morning it says, Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen. Point number one for us this morning is draw close to him, and he will draw near to you. Amen? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, he has brought us close to him. See what Paul says as he opens up? He says, therefore, remember that you, Gentiles, were given the name and you were called the uncircumcised because we had no promise no inheritance, no covenant with God, but because of Jesus Christ, amen? But God, he's given us the opportunity to come close to him and to have a true relationship with him. Are you thankful for that this morning? And so there was this tension between the Jews and the Gentiles. Gentiles were given the name uncircumcised. The Jews given the name circumcised. 
because of their covenant and promise with God. What is this uncircumcision and this circumcision that you're talking about? In medical terms, we all understand. It's the cutting away of the foreskin, of the male organ. But in spiritually, as we look at it, it is definitely a cutting away of the flesh in the spirit, the things that we long for and desire in our flesh. As we've seen last week, we read that we were desiring the things of our, of our flesh, of our minds, wanting to fulfill them, the things that did not glorify God. And so today we have a better understanding as there's a tension within the church in Ephesus between the Jews and the Gentiles, Paul is encouraging unity once again. It's so important for us to understand that, that we need to draw close to Jesus. Amen? To Jesus and him alone. And not the religious side of things, but the relational side of things. And Paul says, you as Gentiles... You were without Christ. You were aliens. You were strangers and without hope in this world. But he steps in and through his blood, he gives us a covenant promise with him. And so we, a better understanding of what the circumcision and the uncircumcision is and what this covenant is, we go back to the book of Genesis chapter 17. And this is where God gives a promise and a covenant to Abraham. And in verses 10 to 14, you can read later on when you have a chance, but Genesis chapter 17, uh, verses 10 to 14, God tells Abraham that every male child from, the, from, the, uh, from eight days old and up in your household, slave or free family, anyone that was purchased with your money that is in your household, and that was a lot of men. You need to circumcise them as a sign, as a symbol that you are mine, that I have a covenant with you. And through your obedience and, your and this covenant that I have with you, Abraham, and your descendants, this is what God promises. As you have this sign, this token, among all the male in your, in your household, God promises that he would make Abraham and his descendants a father, that through Abraham he would be the father of many nations, that they will multiply, that they would be fruitful, that kings would come from his lineage, and that God would be their God, and that he will give the land of Canaan to Abraham and his descendants. And so there was this attitude towards one another as Jews and Gentiles in the church. Same thing we see in our society and sometimes within our church nowadays, sad to say, of this attitude of entitlement maybe or attitude of thinking, I'm better than you. I deserve this because I'm of this class or of this social status. And that is the attitude that God is trying to get and, and do away with. But Jesus, amen, and we see in the, in the last verse, but now in Christ Jesus, he has brought us near to him through his wonderful blood. But I praise God, amen, that God is no longer looking for the exterior symbol of what it means to have a covenant with him. As we see what happens in Genesis we go over to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. He says, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today, for your good. Praise God that we can call ourselves Christians and profess, but if we are not practicing and it is not the fruit of our heart to glorify God from within, this is where it all begins to change. We can comply on the outside, but really, is your heart 
intended and motivated within to live for him, to, to allow God to come into your heart and to live inside freely. And that was verses 12 to 13, but later on down in verse 16, it says, therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. I don't care about the exterior circumcision of what you can show us that you're a part of. I want to see fruit from within. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. See, God is not looking at the exterior. God is not uh, amazed by what we look like on the outside and how clean cut and holy we may uh, show ourselves off to be. Because how many know that there, there's been men and women who have shown to walk as Christians, but end up doing the most horrible thing, the most disgusting thing, stealing, taking away, and hurting pretty much wolves in sheep's clothing. God, God is not, God does not care about the exterior appearance. He cares about what your heart is. And then he'll work from the inside out. Amen? And Paul says we were far off. We didn't have anything to do with the commonwealth of Israel, nor the covenant promises of the people, of this people. But through his blood, amen, he has brought us near. We are grafted in, and we are a part of this wonderful family called the family of God, the children of God. So this morning, how do I draw close to him and how do I allow God to draw close into my life? God is wanting to do a cutting away of the flesh in your heart, in your life. The cutting away of the flesh symbolizes the wants in our lives to fulfill our evil desires that is not lined up with the, the plans of God that allows us to glorify him and to live lives. Amen? You'll hear me say this all the time, church, to live a life that is glorifying and pleasing to him because truly it is. If you can truly examine yourself today and say, Lord, am I, am I pleasing you today? with the things that I'm doing, the activities that I'm doing, the, the time that I'm cutting away for you or spending time with you. And, you. and you balance that out with the many things that you do and commit to on a daily basis. Can you truly and honestly say that, it, that God is pleased and happy by that? I don't know what the answer may be in your life, but you'll hear me say that all the time because that is what it all boils down to. Are we living lives that are glorifying and pleasing to God? And God wants to do a cutting away of our desires, of our wants, of our lusts, of the things of this world. And he wants to draw us near. How do I draw near to God? Stop interfering with the surgical operation and process of God in your life. You haven't truly surrendered and given your life to him, truly committed your life to him, that he would take away the hurt and the pain and make you to be a part of this covenant promise, amen? This inheritance that is not just for a lifetime, but for, for eternity. He's no longer looking on the outside, but he wants to deal with you on the inside. So he's doing surgical removal in our brains, in our hearts, in our eyes, in our mouths. And he's cutting away the foreskin of your heart, the flesh in your life, less flesh and more of him, that he would increase and I would decrease. Amen. That he would be greater in my life. And that the world would, would decrease and in the influences of the world. 
And that's why he is called the great physician. Because he wants to come in and change your life around. And give you victory. Give you hope. Give you peace. Give you purpose today. Amen, church? Praise God for his love and his grace. And the blood shed on the cross for you and I. You and I are no longer far off. No longer strangers in this world, walking around with no hope, no sense, no peace, but Jesus and his blood. This is what James chapter 4, verse 7 and 10 tells us. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? We need to do that today. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. This is God's promise to you. And if you draw close to him, if you submit yourself, if you humble yourself, and you resist the enemy, the enemy will go. He will flee. But it's only from a heart that is sincere, that is willing to commit to him and to let him live inside of you. Pray that you would choose godliness today, church. Choose joy. Choose a sound mind. A heart and a life that is content and satisfied in him. Choose Jesus and draw close to him. Amen. Let's continue reading from verse 14 to 18. He says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For, though he, for, for through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Secondly, we see that there is peace and unity through Christ Jesus. There is peace and unity through Jesus. You see, the church, once again, Paul talks about the enmity between the two. And he wants to bring us together as one. Because he himself is our peace. He has made, he has made both of us one. He's broken down the wall that separates us. What is that wall in our lives that separates us? Religion, our upbringing, where we've come from, our culture, Jews and Gentiles, circumcised and uncircumcised. He's come to abolish this enmity that he talks about. In verse 14 to 18, Paul says, Christ Jesus who is our peace. This is his desire. No longer tied by the laws, uh, the chains of the law and the ordinances of religion, but that we would be united in a loving relationship that he sets and he gives an example of that he sets for us. His promises to bring us together and to unite us together. Look at his promise. He says he's abolished this in his flesh on the cross, already done. The hatred, the ill feeling towards one another, Jew and Gentile, and our society and our world today living in corrupt mentality, a hatred in their hearts towards one another, misunderstanding, and allowing the enemy to lead them on in, this, in these hateful thoughts that we continue to see. And his desire is to bring peace, to make us one. 
that we would, we would be reconciled to God in one body through the cross, through the power of the cross, through the precious blood of Jesus, putting to death the hatred. We need to allow God to do his work in our lives and know that there is peace and unity only through Christ and nothing else, no other program, no other bill, nothing will bring us peace and unity until we know that it's only through Jesus, until we accept him as Lord and Savior, then we will experience true peace that he's already conquered on the cross. And it says, he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. Not just those who were far off who needed to hear about peace, but those who were near as well. Those who thought that they did not need salvation or didn't need to hear the good news of Jesus. He came to preach to those both far away and those who were near, those who were without God and those who were self-righteous or thought they knew it all or had it all. We all need Jesus in our lives. And it says, for through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Amen. That is our goal today, is that, Lord, you would live inside of me, that we would have peace in you and with one another to love our neighbor, to be made as one, to have a unity only through your son Jesus, and that we would have, that we would have access by one spirit, his spirit, to God the Father. Amen. The only way we can do this is when we take on his peace and let him fight our battles. Let him fight for us. No longer us fighting the battles in the flesh and in the spirit realm, thinking that we can accomplish something. No. Let go and let God. Let him do the warring and the battling on our behalf. Amen. Then you can sleep better at night. Then, then you can wake up refreshed, ready to live your life according to the will of God and the plan of God for that day, no longer stressing about what people said and people did and people criticizing and inputting all these things that may bring you down. God doesn't want that for our lives. God wants us to focus on him, to have access to his goodness and his purpose in your life. Exodus verse, chapter 14, verse 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. Amen. He will fight for you. It's his promise. And you shall hold your peace. Amen. Peace and unity through Jesus. Let God fight your battles for you. And all you got to do is hold your peace. I'm reminded of a song that we used to sing back in the day. Victory shall be mine if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Amen. And I pray that is true in your life today, that you would no longer worry or fret about what the world does and says about you, but that you would stay focused and on course to what God wants to do in your life. Let him fight your battles. Let him fight for you. And all you got to do is hold your peace, stand your ground, stand rooted in him, and give him the praise, glory, and honor. Amen. Peace and unity through Christ. The only way we can do that is allow God to do his thing in our lives and in our situations. Amen. Our closing verses in verses 19 to 22. Let's read together. It says, <clears throat> Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into 
a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Last point, point number three this morning, we are citizens built in him. We are citizens built in him. Picture the temple that Paul is talking about here. We are being brought together unified. The building materials are being shipped in and God is putting them into place. Paul is saying is we're, we're, we're no longer strangers. We're no longer aliens. Uh, we're no longer without him. We are part of the covenant, amen, through his blood, through Jesus Christ and his done work, finished work on the cross. And now he's putting us together, molding us together. We are fellow citizens, saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, all that they've done before us. Amen. All of their prophecies and pointing to Jesus from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And the, uh, the apostles and disciples proclaiming and declaring and preserving throughout the ages the good news of Jesus for us today. That we would stand before you and proclaim once again that this holy temple is continuing to being built. Whether Jew or Gentile, that you have time and opportunity today to accept him as your Lord and your Savior and be a part of this holy temple, the family of God. Let him rule and reign in your life. And he says this, the foundations were the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. God desires to live in our hearts as he's gathering everyone, everything together. And this temple is being built, this holy temple. Allow Christ to be the chief cornerstone in where we lay all foundations upon, being straight, being leveled, being our righteousness, being our peace, being our joy. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, amen, of this building and in our lives. Why? So that the Holy Spirit would dwell in this place. Amen. As it says, you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. We are citizens built in him. Allow God to do the work, the molding in your life and allow him to come and live and dwell inside of you. And as long as we stay united and intact family, as long as we stay together, this temple, this holy temple, will weather out the storm, the evil, the wickedness, the hard times in our lives. This temple will stand strong because Christ is the chief cornerstone. It is not some a weak foundation built on sand, but built on good, solid foundation. And this temple will stand and withstand every difficulty in our lives. And this is where God wants to come and dwell in family. He wants to come and dwell in your heart, in your life, and make you a part of his promises, of his covenant. And so today, as we celebrate and honor our fathers today, men, as Christ is the cornerstone, ultimately, in this big picture of our lives, of, uh, of the world, he is the chief cornerstone of everything. God has placed you in your family to be the cornerstone. As you set the example, 
as you are righteous, amen, to be the influence and inspiration to your children, to your wife, in your marriage, and those around you that look up to you and, and you lead. God has given you the wisdom and the knowledge today. Brothers, I pray that you would allow God to come and live inside of your life. It's a picture of what Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 to 22 tells us. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. So I, as, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And we see God is knocking at your door. Amen. Some of the men have not opened up to him to come in and rule in their lives and to live inside. But I'm praying, men of God, this morning, listening, that you are opening that door and allowing God to come in and dine with you, fellowship with you, teach you, mold you into his likeness that you would be a great cornerstone to your family and for your loved ones for your children that they would see what a godly man looks like a godly man loves how a godly man endures difficult times how a godly man prays in the good and in the bad and gives God all the glory how a godly man says, Lord, live inside of me. Amen. God is good this morning, church. God is faithful. And I praise God for you men. And I pray that God will continue to give you wisdom and knowledge and insight in your life. And encourage you. Strengthen you. And give you good health for all that he has planned for you in your life. Amen. Draw close to him, and he will draw near to you. And let us not interfere with what God is wanting to do away and cut away in our lives. Amen. Don't interfere during the surgery. Amen. Peace and unity through Christ Jesus. Let him fight our battles for us as we hold on to his peace and his truths. Amen. We are citizens built in him. So allow God to dwell in our lives, in this temple, make it holy. Let him be the chief cornerstone in our lives, that we would be the cornerstone in our loved ones' lives for the glory of God. Let us pray this today and give him glory. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for the fathers, Lord, tuning in today that they would be encouraged to be the, the cor cornerstone of their families, Lord. They, they would stand for righteousness. They would stand for truth. They would stand for love. Amen. That they would stand for peace. What it looks like to call unto you, Lord, in the good and the bad. To be the example, Lord, in their families, to their children. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for, for the wisdom and the knowledge that, that you give to us and the understanding to every man listening and to every person listening today. Father, we give you all the glory and honor for your word. We thank you for today. And it's your, in your mighty name, Lord, we pray and we all said, amen. As I continue to pray this morning, if you're here you're listening, you're tired of fighting your battles alone and on your own. You're wanting peace and there is no peace in your life. There is no love. There's nothing but confusion. There's nothing but hatred all around you, loneliness. And you want God to come in and rule and reign in your life today. You want him to come and dwell in your heart and live inside of you. Would you kindly pray this prayer with me this morning and just say, Jesus, come into my heart. 
Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Would you make me yours? Would you make me right in your sight, Lord? Pray for your righteousness and your peace and your joy to come into my heart. And so, Father, I pray that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died for my sins. You rose from the dead, and you are coming again. And I want to be ready and right for you, Lord. So have your way, Lord. Go before me. Take complete control. And it's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer this morning, we're so excited for you. Amen. Amen. Would you please comment and let us know that you prayed that prayer. Contact us uh, through the inbox or through email or on our website. But once again, thank you for worshiping with us today. I pray that the word of God was encouraging and challenging to you. And I pray that our daily prayer and cry is that, Lord, would you live inside of me and have your way today. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. He knows everything. Amen. He knows our name. He knows the will and the plan for our life. And I want you to stay encouraged that he knows what he's doing in your life. Amen. He is the father that created everything. And he wants to bless you. He wants to guide you protect you and provide for you today. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Let's continue to worship. Adventures to sing it out together. Have a maybe.
Father, we're so thankful this morning that we have a Savior, a Lord, and a Father, a Heavenly Father in you, that you hear us every time we call and pray to you, Lord. And our prayer this morning is that you would continue to live inside of us, Lord. Fill us with your peace, your grace, and your mercy, Lord God, that we would show it to others in love as you've loved us, Lord God. So, Father, as we celebrate and honor our earthly fathers today, we thank you for them, Lord, their sacrifices and their love towards us. We thank you ultimately, Heavenly Father, for blessing them, blessing us with them, Lord, giving them your wisdom and your knowledge and your strength. Father, we pray that you would continue to bless every father, Lord God, today, that you would continue to lead them as they guide and lead their families, Lord, that you would be the chief cornerstone of their lives, that they would give you the glory and the honor that you deserve. So, Father, we give you praise. We give you honor for our service today and with our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we all said, amen, amen. Well, praise God, church, once again, thank you for worshiping with us. We're so blessed excited for what God is going to do in, in our lives this week. Amen. Join us next week as we uh, continue on our online services, but set and, and save the date for Sunday, July 5th, as we'll be gathering back here at our church building. Amen. To fellowship with one another and to celebrate and honor God for all that he's done. Amen. Have a wonderful and blessed Father's Day and a blessed week ahead. We'll see you soon. God bless you.